So this is going to be a fun one, isn't it? A company, or shall I say a publication, a major publication with deep roots in the financial industry, Barron's. They are a company that originally was a weekly newspaper that was published by Dow Jones and Company, uh, property of News Corp, blah, 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 founded in 1921, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm getting all this information off the Wikipedia article for this company because I didn't really care to do much more research than that. They have a website. They post professional things. They reach out to companies. They try to predict you know, stock market stuff and all that, whatever. This company put up an article today that suggests almost the unthinkable. It suggests that Apple, with its $130 billion uh, that they're trying to spend because they want to become um, cash neutral, and the reason you want to become cash neutral as a company is that's how you basically avoid massive, massive taxes. As much as companies want to be profitable, they basically want to reinvest those profits in the, in like you know around the time that they make them. So therefore, when they file their taxes, they end up breaking even essentially so uh, a lot of times how companies do it that are really profitable is they pay dividends out to shareholders that's one way and apple has done that but there's a lot of other ways and well such as reinvesting doing major acquisitions all of that stuff and apple has been considering a major acquisition of some type but Barron's solution uh to help them out with their cash flow problem but also massively grow the company is to buy nintendo now look I'm going to try to take this article as seriously as I can. I'm going to show you the article because I don't think it's worth you spending your money to read it. Barron's is a website that, that requires you to spend money to read it. So uh, I'll link the article for those that would like to confirm it. But we'll just be showing it right on screen for all of you guys. I'm sorry, Barron's. Contact me if you would like me to take down this video. Uh, but uh, I, I have to respond. Let's get into this article. So there you see it, Apple's next big move, it should buy Nintendo. Now they did come, they reached out to Apple and Nintendo for comment, neither of course commented. Uh, it talks about Apple needs its next big thing fast, talking about how their revenue's down, the, the Apple, the iPhone's not doing as well. Yada, 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 he says, you know, obviously uh, the $130 billion in cash they got to spend. Um, you know, there's flashy candidates they could buy like Netflix and Tesla, uh, I don't understand the logistics behind buying those companies, but obviously those aren't always super high profit companies. Like Netflix and Tesla both make a lot of money, but they reinvest their money back into the company and back into shows a lot. So they're not really a profit built company, although they are smartly built. Um, this is where it gets interesting. It says the best fit for Apple may be Nintendo. It's stylistic twin in Asia. Like Apple, Nintendo likes to make money. I mean, like like every company in the world, but okay. Both companies have similar attributes. Mountains of cash, gushing profits, beloved brands, loyal customers, and sticky ecosystems of software and services. Apple declined to comment. Nintendo did not respond. With Nintendo, Apple would get significant exposure to the large growing gaming industry, all the money the industry's worth, all, the, all this stuff, uh, all the great IPs Nintendo has. Again, we're not going to go through the entire article, uh, but it's down in the link in the description if you would like to pay money to read it. It's like $1 for eight weeks or whatever. Whatever their website kept, told me. Um, so it says, imagine playing Switch, Super Nintendo, or old NES classics on any Apple TV or iPad with the simple addition of a wireless Bluetooth controller. If only that is the way it works, especially with the Switch, but, uh, sure. Conveniently, the latest iOS devices use the same ARM-based processor chip technology found in Nintendo's Switch, making software conversions much easier. It's a little more complicated than that because Apple actually uses a completely different one in their latest phones that's actually better than what the Switch has, but I digress. Um, I guess you apparently think Apple is using uh, Android technology from like five years ago when they have their own proprietary processing units. I digress. Let's 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 move forward. Um, Apple could help Nintendo aggressively scale its Nintendo Switch online paid subscription business, which enables robust multiplayer online services. Well, I mean, I will say this: as a Nintendo fan, I would like to see. I think Apple could probably handle the online service better. Although uh, a donkey might be able to handle the online service better. So okay, sure, I'll I'll, I'll give you. Congrats, author! You came up with one positive point for Nintendo that uh, that Apple could help with. Um, obviously, it can increase the Nintendo's development of smartphone games, yeah, and it can force promotion of it on the Apple Store, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, 
the mobile market is where uh, Nintendo would be able to see massive gains, at least in the iOS and Apple division. Although, here's the thing. The gains you get in at, at Apple, you lose on Android because Nintendo's games would no longer be available on Android, you would assume, because Apple's going to want to monopolize them. But I'm not really sure if it would be a big enough net game for uh, Nintendo to just have their, their games go on iOS devices. But I don't know. I, that's something that someone needs to do a lot more research into. So here's here's where we get into the actual meat of buying Nintendo. Perhaps the best part of the deal, Apple may be able to acquire the highest quality video game publisher in the world. Some some people debate that, but I mean, as a Nintendo fan, that that feels kind of nice. Nintendo has a market value of 34 billion, but Nintendo is conservative with its capital and has approximately 9.6 billion in net cash. True, that gives the company an enterprise value of 24 billion, but an actual value of 34 if apple offered a 50 percent premium to nintendo's market value a deal nintendo would have to consider the price tag would come in at roughly 40 billion that's still cheap as recently as a year ago nintendo had a market value of 55 billion if a full acquisition can't be consummated a large equity stake or strategic partnership could also work for both companies so here's the thing apple can come knocking on nintendo's door I mean, they literally could come knocking. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, Nintendo, we have a check for $40 billion. Will you please hand over your company? And Nintendo's going to look at them and be like, we're a publicly traded company. We can't just hand you the company. It doesn't work that way. You have to buy the stocks. Nintendo currently does not own 50% of its own stocks. So... You would have to do what what Vivendi tried to do with Ubisoft. You'd have to do what's called a hostile takeover. You would have to try to own 51% of all stocks so you could own controlling interest in Nintendo. And if you want to own the whole of Nintendo, you would have to buy 100% of all of the stocks. Nintendo themselves, well, obviously, you'd have to talk to them a bit because they'd have to get the employee stock values and all that stuff. They can't just knock on the door and offer Nintendo $40 billion and say, hand your company over. That's not how it works. It's a publicly traded company. I can go online right now and buy Nintendo stock. I can buy Nintendo stock right now. That's not how this works. This author, for being from a website that is uh, super professional in the business world, showing a complete lack of understanding of what, how a company like Nintendo could be bought by Apple. It's not just cutting a $40 billion check. It's buying out all the shares. It's not about offering Nintendo even more than their valuation is. It's about being able to buy all the shares and having all the shareholders being willing to sell those shares. Again, Vivendi was not able to do this with Ubisoft uh, because the, the Ubisoft's partners, you know, like, you know, Yves Guillemot and all that stuff, went to all of the remaining shareholders and begged and pleaded them not to sell any more stock to Vivendi. And then Vivendi eventually gave up. So what Nintendo can do is they can make the takeover easier by not telling stockholders to um, hold on to their stock and not sell to Apple. But Apple can't just cut them a check and it's all good. That's not how this works. They have to buy out a majority stake in the stock market. And uh, yeah, Nintendo can't actually stop that because that would require Nintendo to be able to have enough investors not sell their stock. And I'm sure there are plenty of investors. A majority of the stock is owned in Japan. They're very honorable in Japan. I'm sure if Nintendo told their investors in Japan don't sell to Apple, they won't. So again, a very confusing point being made here about how this could work. Yes, Apple could do a hostile takeover, but they can't just cut a check and Nintendo says, sure, here's our company. That's not how this works. Anyways, let's go on in the article and see what else this person has to say about this supposed partnership. Nintendo currently trades at a reasonable 14 times its, its next fiscal year, which is March 2020. Earnings. Wall Street forecasts that Nintendo will generate almost $13 billion in sales next year, next fiscal year. The Kyoto, Japan-based Amer uh, company's American depository receipts have declined nearly 40% from their early 2018 highs, amid concerns that Nintendo's lighter software slate this year will detract from its ability to meet its Switch's hardware sales forecast. This is referring to the $20 million forecast, of which we won't actually know how close they are until January 31st, but we do know that Smash Bros. and Switch and Let's Go Pikachu have also sold incredible so, 
Uh, I'm guessing that this dip about the concerns was an overreaction and things are going to actually start rising again in, in 2019. But uh, Investors are now too pessimistic about Nintendo's prospect. The market could be surprised by Nintendo's holiday momentum. Again, so they admit it could be a surprise. Boosted by the strength of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which will enable the publisher to hit its March target of 20 million units. Apple can learn from Microsoft, the company that surpassed it in market value last year. The software giant jumped into video games with the Xbox in 2001, a platform that has morphed into a major online service. In its latest quarter, Microsoft reported gaming revenue growth of 44%, which was driven by Xbox software and services. The monthly user base on its Xbox Live online service grew by 8% to 57 million. Sony's own paid game subscription service called PlayStation Plus had 34.3 million subscribers as of September, although it's not also counting um, some of the other aspects. Like they have, they, they have a, a TV service now. Uh, PlayStation does uh, the, the retro game service plus the plus their PlayStation Network stuff. Anyways, uh, it's a little bit more than more than the, than the numbers they're giving overall for all their subscription services. But I mean, PlayStation's doing all right. Take Nintendo's content and Apple's scale, and the combined company could quickly jump ahead of Microsoft and Sony. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, the, the thing is, is that, you know, Apple's not that far behind Microsoft in terms of market value. So obviously, if they get Nintendo, they're going to jump ahead. Uh, anyway, it says today's investors uh, value Microsoft at 22 times estimated 2019 earnings. Well, Apple trades at just over 12 times. Thanks to its hardware centric perception, the game plan is clear your move, Apple. The game plan to me is someone is just smoking a little bit of something. Had a few too many drinks and wrote this at 3 a.m. after bar close. Apple's not buying Nintendo. There are numerous reasons Apple won't buy Nintendo. One, not enough people that own Nintendo stock are probably going to be willing to sell out to Apple. It's just an honor thing in Japan. Japan companies don't like being owned by American companies. Unfortunately for Apple, this is just the reality of the world. Okay, Microsoft was willing to partner with Nintendo. Sony, which was a Japanese company at one point, was willing to partner with Nintendo. But Nintendo's never been willing to actually have its investors be, be like, okay, cool, come buy a majority share. Now, again, some of this is not something that Nintendo can control. There will be shareholders willing to sell to Apple, especially overseas, and Apple could buy a huge chunk of stock. But even in owning that stock, they can't control anything unless they own 51%. And that's, I, I, I think like 70% of all Nintendo stock is held in Japan by Japanese families. So I don't, I don't foresee that sort of takeover being possible unless Nintendo wants to be taken over. And Nintendo is a multi-billion dollar company that likes to do their own thing. They don't want to be controlled by a company that has no understanding of their business model, has no understanding of Japanese culture, has not had uh, the greatest um, penetration in Japan. Yes, there are Apple products in Japan, iPhones are in Japan, but there's a lot of other devices in Japan that are dominating Apple products. So it's not exactly something that would be advantageous for Nintendo in their home country alone to do this partnership. They have different fundamental core values on the business side of things. So what about this makes it a good match for Nintendo? I get from Apple's side. I get Apple buying Nintendo. I get what they gain. But what does Nintendo gain? Some money? You know, some some executives like Miyamoto get to walk off into the sunset with, with you know, millions of dollars, billions. Heck, maybe they give them billions. I don't know. I don't really see how that really fits anything that Nintendo does from a core value-wise. So you know why Apple and Nintendo didn't respond when you reached out for comment on this idea? Because neither one of them are probably interested in such a deal. Apple is likely not interested in a 40-plus... It's going to cost more than $40 billion. Let's be real. When that investor's stuff comes out, Nintendo stock is probably going to rise since it's it sank way sooner than it should have, and their market cap's going to blow back up to 55, 60, 70 million, or billion dollars, I should say. And uh, I don't know that Apple's willing to give that kind of cash uh, at a premium price, by the way, to actually get a hold of Nintendo, because that 40 billion sounds nice now. That's before the financial reports. That's before the killer lineup this year. That's before the fact that the stock's going to rise. 40 billion, basically, is what I'm saying, wouldn't get it done. Um, for you to buy enough stock up, it's probably going to be closer to $100 billion. 
uh, just because some stockholders aren't going to want to sell now knowing the stock price is going to be going up. Like now's a great time to buy Nintendo stock before that investors meeting hits. Because as soon as that investors meeting lands and as soon as games start coming out this year and the sales continue, it's going to go up like this. And the best time to sell is probably going to be, um, you know, right after the holiday season uh, at the end of this year. So I'm just... I'm just baffled at this entire concept. Apple is not buying Nintendo, so don't get your hope up about that if that's something you want. If you're worried about it, neither one of the companies seem to be interested in such an acquisition anyways. So, I mean, put it this way. If there was a company out there you want to acquire Nintendo, who would it be and why? Uh, Nintendo is actually more so in the position to acquire other companies than be acquired, but whatever. Let's assume that a company was going to buy out all of Nintendo's shares. Who would that be? Who would you want it to be? I don't think Apple is the company that would sit at the top of the list for many of us. I, I can tell you that right now. Um, I mean, they have some similar practices to Nintendo, I suppose, especially in the valuation of their products. But, uh, man. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rovagents from Nintendo Prime. Be sure to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Giveaway through the gleam.io link down in the description. It's absolutely free to enter, so why not give it a shot? Uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I'll, I'll catch you in the next one.